Many, many years ago, I was an aspiring PhD scholar studying artificial intelligence and advanced music systems for video games. And in that process, I was lucky enough to be scoring the Tomb Raider video game franchise and really just pour my soul into learning about virtual instruments and learning about scoring for video games and built these systems. I invented something called microscoring, which sort of became one of the leading methods of doing music in video games. In that process, I also discovered that I didn't have the instruments I wanted. I wanted really big Hans Zimmer's kind of music and the instruments weren't available that I was looking for. I wanted a really big white sound so things would have to be recorded in a hall and so forth. That eventually actually led me into this whole virtual instruments kind of business and I actually dread the term virtual instruments. We got to find a better term for it. These are software instruments. There's nothing virtual about them. They're as real as they get on the keys at least. Anyway, that's a different story. But in that process, I was like, I need instruments that sound bigger and there are none available on the market. And I want them very, very comprehensive, so comprehensive that I never want to come back and explore that concept again. And eventually the sort of frustration of not having those instruments led me down the deep, dark path of sampling. That began with our epic tom ensemble, which is this beautiful ensemble of tom toms from drum sets and rototoms and then also bass drums. These are discrete ensembles that I could combine. And then it became like a doll ensemble. I wanted that sort of piercing world-like sound that you get from the dolls. And then I was like, well, I also want an epic taiko ensemble. I want more of the sort of bassy kind of sounds. So we did that as well. And then just to wrap it up, let's also do an epic frame drum ensemble. Now, I like to do things big, but I also like to do them deep and extensively. This is the most comprehensively sampled section of frame drums ever done. And just to sort of prove the insanity with this library here, you get the full ensemble, meaning all the frame drums playing at the same time. That's great if you just want a super powerful sound, that sort of maximized energy of just pushing as much as you can. But we also did DVC or chamber-like ensembles. I know those are sort of classical terms. In other words, we did smaller ensembles of the frame drums. The frame drum can sometimes be tonal. So when you pair the right tonal frame drums together, you get a very sweet kind of tone. So you have the full ensemble, then you have the DVC ensemble, and then you can almost play down to solo as well. But the frame drum, it's not just a singular instrument. It's an instrument using a variety of different cultures, a variety of different countries. It can be played in many different ways. You have the Egyptian rick drum, which is a tambourine supersized kind of instrument with rattles on the side. But there's also different kind of frame drums that don't have them. Some are hold with a wooden stick on the back, played on the front with a mallet. Sometimes they're played on both sides with fingers. There are many, many different ways to play the frame drums. And in this library, as you'll see, we're discovering different families of frame drums, both as ensembles, but also in these so DVC and solo-like qualities. But that's a lot of talking. I say we'll get into the walking. Welcome to the epic frame drum ensemble. I can't tell you how much joy it is to have 127 discrete velocity layers on every single part of the ensemble here. As you can see when I play different keys. I get all these different ensembles here. And because we have 127 layers and near infinite amount of round robin, It's so expressive what you can do. Let me just take this one key here. You can hear a little bit of metal rattle. That's coming from the rig drums as well. A specific type of frame drum, as I mentioned, that has these sort of rattles on it. Let me just isolate this note using our one note stretch here. And now I have the rig drum all over my keyboard here. But because it's 127 layers, And because I'm playing across the entire keyboard here, even down to the basses, this was like two octaves lower than its standard tone. It's so freeing and liberating on the keys. It's like... Now, that was the full ensemble. Let's shift the premise over and just play with the solo 
frame drums here as well. You can hear the sweetness of the whole enhance the sound, but a very sort of clear tonal quality to the drums. That one here. So you can hear it's big, it's piercing. It's not like the ensemble, which tends to have this more sort of cluster like sound. It's very clear in its tone. And I just say that because sometimes you may want to have an epic taiko ensemble in the bottom, and then this very more clear sort of piercing percussion on top here. It has a tonal clarity to it. Oh my God, that's like the Phil and Collins. Maybe someone needs to do like a super epic rendition of In the Air Tonight. Even this guy here. It has such a tonal quality to it. Uh, let me use the one note stretch on this guy here as well. Now, because we have near infinite round robin, that also means that stuff like rolls can completely be done just by playing them here. I can't play this fast on the keys, so let me just trigger it in the ARP here so you can hear what I mean. So that's one example of how you can make rolls inside of it. But it's also that we have so many discrete velocity layers here. The best way to exemplify that is also just to play through the ARP here and then just hear all the velocities. It's just infinite. And playing it on the keys here, This gives me such like closeness to the instrument. I remember I was in the sessions and this is sort of the closest virtual representation because there's no more like, oh, I only have these layers or I can't do that many round robins. It's really the true representation of being there. We will never get closer to those real ensembles and it's really facilitated by the technology here. So that's one of the sweet aspects about sound paint. As I mentioned, we also did the Egyptian rick drum and I'm sure it's not just Egyptian that is used in a variety of countries in the Middle East, but it's really a big frame drum with metal rattles on, it's beautiful. I'm so like butchering this thing here. When you see real people play rig drums, they're really, really fast and nimble on the keys. But it's really this sort of idea of a playable tambourine, if you will, played with your fingers or with mouths. It's funny, I'm doing this, which is not really what's going on here. Um, if you notice the sound here, sometimes you have sort of that more tambourine sound. This one with a little more body in the sound. Almost free of rattles. There, because it with a little more rattles, they're hit harder with the sticks. Down here, a little more rattle. I just show you that because when we talk about the different ways of playing it here, there are many different ways you can play the drums and they're sort of facilitated on every single key here. We have all these different playing styles, different kind of mallets, different kind of frame drums as well, but we also did effects. You can do this sort of Super Bowl trick where you get this sort of whiny sound when you drag a Super Bowl over the skin of the drum. Oh, that one is cool. Oh, 
Oh, that's cool too. To me, they almost have like a whale calling quality to them. Let me take this sound here, stretch it over all the keys, and then open offset here. And let's try to go a little bit into the sound. So we kill that initial attack, but we get the whole woo woo woo. So cool. Almost like a synthesizer. I'm gonna stretch it down in time here, see what happens. So that was an example of what we call deep drags, meaning very slow, long kind of motions. We also have drags, as we call them, these effects articulations for the large frame drums as well. That in itself deserves like an uh, analog distortion on top of it. Let's just hear. Yeah, that's good enough. We also have drags for the rig drums. It almost sounds like when someone goes like, ah. Oh, <laughs> I must be losing it. We also have Rick rolls. That would be R I Q rolls, not what you think it might be. Yep, you know, it's that kind of sound. But this is sound pain, and you know how funny that there would be like tonal qualities. I didn't hear that down in the root note. It was like water. We also got a variety of different kind of swells, sort of naturally played swells with the ensemble. This is one of my favorite programs. This is the master all program. So you have all the different ensembles all laid out in the keys here, beginning in those sort of more solo like qualities up here and then getting deeper down to the sort of more bass like qualities. And we also have this stomp ensemble, which is in the bottom of the keyboard here. But this is really your full super buffet a la carte kind of patch where you just have everything laid out. Down here, this is the body ensemble where we are slapping ourselves and the drums at the same time, just to try to get a sort of different, more bass-like sound. I'll come back to those as well. But this is really the full ensemble on the keys here. You know, there are very trader-like gems hidden inside of this library here. There's something super powering in sound paint about not just having the classical sounds like we have in contact, for example, but have the ability to make them into so much more. Let me give you a few more examples of that here. Um, in this patch here, I have the solo frame drums loaded here. They're all laid out in the keys here. But I want to show you how you can control the room size of them 
This is a big room. We recorded these guys in a church, but you can actually shrink the size of the room and get a more local sound. So sometimes the problem with the hall recordings is that they can be a little bit overwhelming in a mix. So if you want to dial that down a little bit, shorten the hall, but still get the same sound without affecting pitch. So right now, if you look at the rack time module here, you'll notice when I move the mod wheel that the slider is changing here. In middle position, it's how the samples was naturally recorded in the church. But as I move the slider up here, the room is going to get shorter and shorter. Much more local sound. Like a little scoring stage. But as we move down here, we're back in the hall. This one is very sort of punchy, so you can really hear the ring out of the hole being short here. So for me, I'm going to start using the speed of time more and more because it's not just that we have the ensembles, also we can play with room size as a part of the mix. So for example, imagine you're playing something soft. But as your composition goes sort of bigger, it could also be that you simply expand the width of the sound as a part of your composition. Do the same thing with microphones as well. So as you can see, there are so many different colorful ways of using this library here. Let me just wrap it up, jam a little bit on the patch here. I'll add a little bit of distortion to it later on as well, just to, again, sort of show you those different flavor profiles, if I can say that. Maybe flavor profiles sound so artificial, like artificial flavors. That's not what we're doing here. We're doing like real acoustic, homegrown, organic sounds. So sweet down here. You know, epic can be many things. It doesn't always have to be loud, but sometimes it can just be big, fat, deep. Let me add some distortion to that as well. <laughs> 